Hi everyone, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you wanna see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make these projects, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. When you purchase Stampin' Up! products through me, you can earn free products. Check out my current customer appreciation products on my blog, and the link is listed below in the description. Today, I'd like to share with you a new collection of products from Stampin' Up! called Eden's Garden Suite. And I've created these two projects to showcase the products. So this is a little table top stand and it can go maybe on like a fireplace mantle or on a dresser top. It's just a really fun home decor piece that is really simple to make. Um, this table top is a simple element to make and then you can decorate it however you want. So then my second project is this beautiful card and it uses some of the products in a fun and unique way. And so I'm excited to share that with you today. So let's go ahead and get started. So before I begin, I'd like to share with you the products that come in this collection. Let's begin with the stamp set and dies. These are bundled together and so you can save 10% when you purchase them together in a bundle. The stamp set is called Eden's Garden and it has some really beautiful greetings. I love the script text with the more print, like a typewriter text. That's a really pretty combination of those two together. And then the images are all distinctive images. And that means that you get both light and dark tones with one stamp. And I'm going to share with you some simple techniques that you can use to get the best out of these distinctive stamps. Next, we have the Eden dies. And it's important to note that these dies do not cut out the images from the Eden's garden stamp set. However, they do provide some really beautiful images and die cuts that coordinate really well with these images. So you're going to get this fun rectangle oval wreath shape. Then you get another wreath shape that's a little bit smaller with some different um, leaves and berry images to it. You get a fun border die, a label die, and then a leaf sprig kind of die here. And so I've used most of these dies on my projects and so we'll play with those in just a minute. Then in the collection you get two paper packs. The first one is the Ever Eden cotton paper. And what the cotton paper kind of feels really smooth and a little velvety on one side. And then the other side is just, um, just kind of feels like paper. So I do feel like there's definitely a front to the cotton paper. And then it's really thin. You might be able to see my hand behind it. It's almost like tissue paper in its lightness. And so we're going to be using that today as well. And I'm going to be sharing with you some ideas on how to use this paper. It comes in two colors. It's evening evergreen and soft succulent, and they coordinate well with the designer series paper. The next product is the designer series paper, and it is a specialty paper, which means that you do have some gold foiling on it. This is called the Ever Eden specialty designer series paper. It is a 12 by 12 sheet, and I've just cut them down to be six by six, so it's a little easier for me to show you. This is the gold foiled side. So this one has some little gold foiled dots. Then we've got a beautiful vine. This one, just some more leaf images. Again, some beautiful leaves. And all the colors coordinate really well with evening evergreen and soft succulent. And then on the other side, we have some fun patterns. We've got a um, kind of an ombre blended pattern, then kind of a stitching pattern, some fun dot patterns, a cross hatching pattern, and then a small leaf pattern. And those are all just really fun and can make some really beautiful cards and home decor pieces with this product here. And then the last product are the garden gems. 
and I just have a sample of them here. You're going to get two colors. They come in soft succulent and cherry cobbler and you get 140. So it's a full pack like um, Stampin' Up! usually sends with their embellishments. And so these are just really beautiful as well and I've used them on my projects. So let's go ahead and get started making our projects. So I'm going to begin with my home decor piece. And so this piece uses some of the thicker, it's not quite chipboard, but it's like a really thick, smooth cardstock that comes with the designer series paper packs from Stampin' Up. Um, this one is the Harvest Meadow. So they usually have, they're printed on one side. So it's important when you create this that you don't want that printed paper to be on the inside of your your decor piece. So you're gonna be covering that printed so that nobody accidentally sees that there. So the width of my home decor piece is six inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that right in half at six inches. And then it is folded in half at six inches. So I'm gonna move my cutting blade off to the side and use my scoring blade here to make a nice score right in the center at six inches. Okay, and like I said, we want to make sure that, that the text here is covered up with our designer series paper. So I'm just gonna place that on the outside so that it's nice and clean on the inside. So then on our other piece, we're going to cut this bottom connecting piece. So each one of these sections is one and a half inches. So I need a three inch section here and then it just comes up a half of an inch. So that would be an extra inch. So I'm gonna cut this at four inches. So this piece is gonna be four inches by six inches. Then I'm going to do some scoring to create that um, connecting piece. I'm gonna begin scoring at a half inch on the right side. Then I'm going to score at two inches, which will be right in the center. And then I'm going to flip it because I like having the majority of my paper on this side of my paper trimmer. And I'm going to score again at a half inch. Okay. So now I'm going to take a bone folder and I'm going to crease each one of these. And I'm going to create kind of a W shape here. So I first started creasing the center. Then I'm going to fold up the ends and repeat that on the other side. Just like that. So you can see here that I have that W. It does have a tall peak in the center, but it creates that W look. And that's how it's going to be added to our base, just like that. So our next step is to cover the front of our home decor piece. And so to do that, I've cut a piece of the designer series paper to six inches by 12 inches. And I'm just going to add adhesive all along the front of my home decor piece, match up the ends of that designer series paper. And I would probably use liquid adhesive for this just so that I could have a little bit of um, movement when I'm adding my paper to that cardstock piece. And then I'm gonna fold it over and add it to the back. And in the end, I'm gonna get a piece that looks like this. Okay, so you do wanna make a nice crease on that and um, have it cover the all of the um, front and back of that uh, card thick cardstock. Then I'm going to add our W piece with some strong adhesive as well. For this, I'm going to use some tear and tape and I'm just gonna place it on the half inch pieces, those panels on the top and the bottom one. And then we're going to leave the rest of this heavy duty cardstock alone so that it can open up So this does open up by itself, but by adding this extra piece, it just kind of keeps it more stable and creates a little bit of weight at the bottom so it doesn't fall over as easily. 
So when you're adding this, you just want to make sure that the bottom lines up with the bottom of your home decor piece. Okay. And that none of the sides are showing. So just like that. Then we have the, it does go up inside like that. And then remove the paper backing on this side and do the exact same. It should be able, you should be able to just fold everything flat and then it will just be added right to that, just like that, okay? And then it will stand really nicely and be supported with that extra weight at the bottom. All right, so decide which side is your front. I kind of like to make sure that my paper looks the best on all sides. And so we're going to begin decorating the front of this home decor piece now. So let's begin by cutting out the um, designer series paper and cotton paper for this wreath. And you'll notice that from my die, it's a, I have a different shape. And so I'm going to share with you how to change the rectangle shape into more of a circle shape um, with this die cut. So because this is such a delicate die cut, I do want to use the adhesive sheets to um, add to the back of my paper before I cut them out. So I just have some pieces of the designer series paper here and I'm just going to add them to this adhesive sheet. So one, you remove one side of the paper, make sure with the cotton paper that you have that more fuzzy side on the top so that you can get that fun texture. And I just add this like that. And then I'll remove these other strips in just a minute. Same with this one and this one. And I just picked out these patterns because I liked how they went together. You got a soft, a dark, and then kind of this medium color here. And then you can lift these up and remove the rest of this paper here. And the sizes of these papers are just large enough to fit the die. So before I cut anything out, I do want to cover up this little bit of adhesive here. You could use a scrap paper or just the um, leftover paper um, from your adhesive sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the rectangle wreath with my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've cut all of those out. And just as a mention, you do have these inside pieces that have the adhesive sheets on the back. So you, I would hold on to these and use these for any die cuts for projects in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and put these off to the side. We'll use these in just a second. Another fun product that I am using for my um, home decor piece is the linen paper. And this is has a totally different texture than the cotton paper. It's more of a weave, like a fabric, and it does have a backing. And so if you wanted, you could remove the backing from the linen paper because there's it is a little bit sticky and so it will adhere to your projects. For this project, I'm going to keep it on so that it provides a little bit of stability as well as um, when you remove it, you'll kind of see the color from um, behind, like whatever color is behind it, it kind of will show through a little bit. So I also have a piece of evening evergreen cardstock and this is five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. So it's a nice square and I'm going to cut my linen paper just a little bit smaller than that at five inches square. Just like that. Here, I'll show you on this strip here how you can remove the paper. So see there's a paper backing. This here is sticky and then you can see a little bit through it. Okay, so it's a really fun product and you can use it in so many different ways. So on my linen paper, I am going to do some stamping I'm going to use the large stamp image 
from the Eden's Garden. And we're going to stamp it in Evening Evergreen. So you'll just take that large image, ink it up, and then stamp it in the center of each side. So you're going to get a really light image because of the texture of the linen paper. So make sure to get a lot of ink on your stamp before you stamp it. And then rotate so that you can get some different images up along that edge. Okay, so you'll get something that looks like this. So next we're going to take that linen paper and we're going to add it to our Evening Evergreen cardstock right in the center. Like that, and that's just going to support that uh, linen paper to make it a little thicker and easier to be able to stand on its own. Then we're going to take our rectangle wreaths and we're going to cut them in half on the long side. Then you're going to remove the paper backing. This one is the cotton paper and I did it in the soft um, succulent color. All right, so then as you slowly peel apart the cotton paper from the adhesive sheet, you're gonna to want to add this to your card so that it doesn't kind of fold in on itself. So you're gonna place this um, there's going to be some overlapping here in the center. And so we have, we are covering up that center area where it overlaps with the family. So it doesn't really matter which way is the top or the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and work here in the center. So I'm going to place that one in the center here and then slowly add this. It can be, it's really delicate, so it can be a little bit, um, just, just a little bit fussy. So just be careful with it. All right, so once you have the beginning of your cotton paper onto your linen paper, you're just going to slowly work your way around and add it. Okay, and this is one of the bottom layers. So it's just, again, for texture and little bit of detail. So if there's any issues where you have like a piece that is um, folded up over itself or anything like that, it's going to be okay. You just want to try to get it right in the center of your linen paper. Okay, so you're going to get something that looks like that. So you see how it's there in the center. And then remember this area here is going to get um, kind of covered up. So now you're going to create a circle here by shortening that rectangle. So I'm just gonna, I want it to be right about there. So this is where I'm gonna start it. And you can also cut any of the extra off. So this might be a little too much on this side. So I'm just gonna take my pair of paper snips and trim that off. So like that. And then just slowly pull this and lay it down as you gently pull it. The cotton paper is the most um, careful one. The other ones have are a little bit thicker and so they're a li little bit easier to add to your project. So then we're just going to come around and add this here like that. I think I'm going to remove some of this excess on this side. Okay, so not a perfect circle there, but like I said, this is our lower level of detail, and so we'll be okay to just um, cover up some of the um, little areas where maybe we missed out on getting that to show up right. So let's go ahead and do this one. You'll notice that this is much easier to add. So go ahead and cut this in half along so that long edge gets cut in half and then you're going to remove the paper backing and you can even just remove the whole paper backing from this 
because it is much easier to work with. There we go. Okay, and then you're going to add this to your circle. And I'm just rotating it just a little bit because I want to kind of add this a little bit at a different angle. And I'm kind of pulling it out so it's a little bit more of a circle. So do you see how I added it above that? And then we'll do again with the second side. Still be gentle. This side I want to get closer, kind of like that one. So I'm going to bring that out and then pull that down just a little bit to get that circle look. Just like that. Okay. There's a little gap here. We'll fill that in with our third one. So let's do that now. Cut this one in half. Okay, so for this one, I think I still want my um, greeting to go this way. So I'm going to add this. I want to be able to see kind of all the layers. So I'm going to add this a little bit higher up. Bring it down between those two there. Like that. Okay. So just some really fun layers. That's all this is. That's all I'm doing is creating layers. I think I actually want to bring this one in a little bit. So instead of it being on the outside, I'm going to bring this one down just a little bit more in to something like that. Then I'm going to cut off this excess here. You can see when you start adding all those layers that um, these little areas where you trim, you can't really tell that they're there. So the next step is to create our label and your label could really say anything. I wanted to um, place it on a dark piece of the evening evergreen and add just a little texture. So I'm going to be stamping another image from the Eden's Garden stamp set. I want to just kind of rotate. This is just a very subtle texture to the background. I'll give you kind of a quick look at that. Can you see all that? Just that really subtle texture. And so this is um, five and a quarter inches by one inch. And I'm gonna cut this decorative edge here to each end. This is the Lovely Labels Pick a Punch. So you just slide that in. And then I always like to rotate it and make sure that it's lined up where I want it. And then you can cut that out. Nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> this one, I like the flat edge one for this project. Okay, so it's gonna create this nice edge here. And that's gonna go on the, in the center, kind of covering up where those um, connection points are. You know, that's looking a little bit long. I think I want to shorten it just a little bit. So to do that, I'm just gonna remove one of those dimensionals and punch this again a couple times, just to make it a little shorter. Looks like I have to remove another dimensional. Okay, so I'm just doing it again. Just gonna punch, maybe I'll do three to kind of shorten it, just like that. Yeah, I like that a little more. I wanted to see some of the white on each side. Okay, so then that goes in the center of your wreath. A little bit of white on each side and make sure it's nice and straight. And then I have cut out the word family with some gold foil and I did use adhesive sheets on the back. And so I'm gonna add these to the center of this strip. So you'll get something that looks like this. 
Now you might notice that there's a little, some um, grooves where the die has some holes that you can poke the letters out. You can flatten those by just using your bone folder or something flat and just kind of pressing those down. You wanna be careful though not to scratch the gold paper. So maybe even like the rounded edge side. You probably won't lose it completely, but you can flatten it down just a little bit so it's not so noticeable. Okay, so you can see here at the bottom of the F how it's not as noticeable as the A. And so you can do that if that is something that you want to have is a nice smooth um, letters. So to just kind of move this along, I'm now going to add this to our easel that we created earlier. And I do want to pop them up with dimensionals. So I've just added that to the center of my easel with dimensionals. And that home decor piece is all done. All right, so now we're going to move on to the card. And we're going to do this fun texture technique right now using the cotton paper. So the first step is to take a piece of cotton paper that's larger than your finished size. And you do also want to work on a finished size that's larger than the piece you need because you're not going to be able to fill up all the edges. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock. And then my cotton paper is six inches by eight inches. And I'm going to take this and scrunch it up. Then I'm going to take my cardstock and add some liquid glue. Then I'll open up my cotton paper. Make sure to work that you're working on that soft side. And you're going to add this to your cardstock and you're just gonna start smushing it to create some fun texture with this cotton paper. So you wanna grab that liquid adhesive that's underneath and smear it and move it around. So you're gonna add the paper. So then the adhesive does start to dry up and so you're not gonna be able to move it around quite as much. So you just wanna make sure that you kind of do it evenly all the way around so that you get some fun texture. Now, if there's any places you need more adhesive, you can always add more to get some texture around the edges. You can see here how I mean that like your edges are not always going to be even. Just depends on how you scrunch it. So that's why you want to always work with a larger piece of cotton paper. And this paper is just perfect for this technique because it has that lightweight um, texture to it. It's just really easy to scrunch. Regular card socks a little more difficult because it's just thicker. Okay, so you're gonna get this really fun and beautiful texture to that paper. So if you wanna flatten this out any, you can run it through your stamp and cut and emboss machine just between your two clear plates and that will flatten it. Or you can keep it raised, which is really fun as well. So now we're going to put this off to the side and let that dry. And we're going to do some stamping with the Eden Garden images. And I want to share with you a way that you can really get a great image each and every time you work with the distinctive stamps. And that is with your Stamparatus. So what I'm gonna do is remove the stamp from my clear block and add it um, right here, I think, to my Stamparatus. Pick it up with the clear plate. And then on some scratch paper, I'm going to stamp it a couple times. So I wanna make sure I have a nice big piece of paper and that the paper is going to be where I need it to be. So that's why I kind of was hovering the image to make sure that it's um, the paper's underneath the image. I'm going to be stamping with Evening Evergreen again. So I'm going to move my card so that you can see what I'm doing here. So you just ink up your image and stamp it. You'll notice that the first image is going to be really light, but you do get some really good definition in it. 
However, I do want a nice dark image. So I'm going to just do it again without moving anything. I'm not moving my paper or my clear plate. And so each time you do this, it's going to get a little bit darker, but you are keeping the different shades, which is something that is so fun with the distinctive stamps is you get all those different tones of color. And so by doing it three times, you cut, you get this really beautiful dark image. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that two more times. All right, so that is all done. The next step is to fussy cut these out. I'm gonna do that off screen and I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished cutting out each of those images, as well as cutting from some gold foil sheets, three of the uh, leaf dies and one of the border dies from that coordinating die set. And they um, also have adhesive sheets on the back. So let's go back to our cotton paper and we're going to now trim this down to the size that we need for the card. So what we're looking for is a piece that is two and a half inches by five and a quarter inches. And I think the easiest way to do that is to push the card stock up against the top of your paper trimmer and then you're going to just move that down just a little bit and trim off. Now you'll notice that I trimmed just the tiniest bit of cardstock as well. And so that's going to keep your cotton paper from tearing if you trim the cardstock and not just the cotton paper. So let's go ahead and do the same here. And you'll also notice that I'm working upside down. And I think again that that's a really good way of keeping things from ripping and tearing on you. Now that I have a straight edge here, I can line that up right with my five and a quarter inch and I'm gonna trim there, and then I'm gonna to go to two and a half inches, which is my final width that I want. Okay, so now I have this really fun piece that's got some great texture, and it's gonna go really nicely with my card. If you have any areas that are bubbling, you can just add some more adhesive underneath those. And tack it down. All right, so to begin putting our card together, I'm gonna to start with a piece from the Designer Series Paper Pack that is four inches by five and a quarter, and I'm gonna add our stamped images to the left side. And these can go on any way you want. You just want to make sure they don't overlap too much of this um, outside border. So, and you can rotate them so you can get some different leaves and images kind of poking out along this side. Let's see, maybe do another circle right there. Okay, so you get something like this. I'm gonna bring this one down just a little bit more. Oops, so that I can see some of that fun pattern paper in the background. So it will look something like that. Then I'm going to add our piece, our cotton paper piece to the right side. It already had some adhesive on the back. Then I've got the gold foil border and I've placed the adhesive sheets on the back of that. I'm gonna use my grid paper to make sure that this gets on placed um, nice and straight on my card. So I'm just lining it up with my grid paper and pressing that down so the adhesive sheet sticks. And then I'll take my paper snips and I'm gonna trim off the excess on this top and bottom. Just like that. Then I'm gonna take some of the linen ribbon from the Flowers for Every Season combo pack and I'm gonna line that up with that stitch line right there and wrap it around my card. So I need to add a little adhesive on the back right there and right there. And then that's gonna hold the ribbon down 
in place. So I want to see that cute stitching. So it's going to go right on the outside of that. Okay. And then I'm going to cut that off. And we'll hold on to that because we're adding some more of that to our card. So it's going to look something like that. And you're going to see a little bit of that gold shining through, which is okay. Let's go ahead and add this to our card base now. So my card base is Evening Evergreen, which is going to just help everything pop. And I'm going to add it with just some regular adhesive. Make sure to go over that ribbon so that it sticks to the card base as well. So it reinforces it all from popping out. Okay, so a nice dark border around everything. Then I have already stamped in Versamark heat embossed in white embossing powder, the Sending Hugs, which is from the Eden's Garden stamp set. And I'm going to create um, a fun ribbon element behind this. And I'm going to add it close to the top or bottom and then wrap back and forth to create like a Z fold and then trim off the excess. And then you're just gonna see how it looks on your card like that. So this one's going up, this one was kind of going down. So if you wanted to flip them, then you just remove the, um, the ribbon from the label and flip it around. But I think this is fine. It's fun to have it be a little bit different. I like the length, I like having it nice and long. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim the ends at an angle since I like the length of everything. And then this gets added with some dimensionals. So make sure to cover the ribbon with dimensionals just so everything is held in place. So right about there, so about maybe an inch or so from the top. And if that's sliding around, there we go. We'll just get that in the right spot. Press that down so that it's touching the cardstock as well so it can hold everything in place. So now we're going to take these cute little leaf dies and they also have adhesive sheets on the back and you're just gonna tuck this around and under the label. So right on top of that ribbon, just to create some fun interest in that ribbon and detail. So the one I did on my card, I did shorten it up a little bit. Let me show you. So I wanted to just focus on this um, leaf here. And so what I did is I just trimmed off the top part of that leaf. Just gave it a nice smooth curve. And then I have this fun, more of a single leaf image that I can tuck up near the top. kind of like that underneath everything. So you can see the two different versions, different ways the ribbons go. And then I did add some of these really pretty gems. So let me go ahead and add those to my card. And I also added them to my wreath. So I will um, pull that project back in here and add those as well. I love the fun shape of these. And so I'm gonna place these in the same place as down here, but just on top, and then do one kind of in the bottom area of this card right there. Okay, so that card is all done. And like I said, let's pull in the wreath and just add a couple gems inside this wreath image. So kind of make them look like they're going with the wreath. You can just add a couple here and there. 
OK. So just add a little bit. I think I might add another one down here closer to the label. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed watching me create these really beautiful projects using the new Eden's Garden collection of products. If you're interested in seeing written instructions or close-up images of these projects, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you'd like to purchase any of the products in this collection, please use the link in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.